Hey dudes, nothing fancy. You know what, to be honest, there's a lot I do not know about blades. I'm always learning. And sometimes my preconceptions I have on knives is just plain wrong. And until I can get a knife in hand, uh, sometimes my initial impression is just off. And the Spyderco Tenacious is a good example of that. If you saw my catalog review series of the Spyderco 2008 product guide, I think in there I was thinking, I gave this one an X. I was thinking, nah, I don't want the Tenacious. It's a little bit on the heavy side. And I'm going to tell you right now I was wrong. And there's some subscribers whose opinion I respect, and they were talking to me about the Tenacious. And I said, you know what, I could be off on that. I need to see one in real life to maybe, maybe make a better judgment on it. And sure enough, when I got the Tenacious in hand, um, I was impressed. So after my review, I changed this to an X to a box. And what that box means is it's on my list to get. And I often make goals for my knives that I want to get. And I'll either page mark the, where it's sold online, our book market, and keep it in a folder. And then as money arises, if and when money arises, I'll just go ahead and shack it. And that's what I did with the Tenacious. So guess what? We can mark that box checked because I now have a Tenacious right here, bad boys, for review. And I will tell you, I love this knife. And I'm going to put this in the category of both EDC and folding tactical designs. And everything that Spyderco says about this knife is right on the money. No kidding. It has so many good features to it. The price point is very reasonable, well under $50. The Spider Tenacious has a lot to offer. Let's talk about the specifics. First off, the blade. I love the Tenacious blade. Now, um, there's a lot of, I like about it. Let me tell you some things that maybe for your cutting task you may not like. And that is sometimes a cutting task, we don't want a really broad blade like that. Maybe we want something more narrow, kind of along the lines of flash. And that's cool. I understand that. But... I think for most cutting tasks that you'll have, I think this blade shape, which is a full flat ground, kind of a leaf drop point blade shape, will be excellent. And I love the flat grinding. I don't know why, but these days I'm just getting into the flat ground blades. I like them. The disadvantage of maybe a flat ground blade is maybe it's not quite as lightweight as a hollow ground blade because we do have more metal in the blade. But honestly, there's a lot to like about it. Cuts better. I think it sharpens more easily. It's easier to reprofile if indeed you do feel you need to reprofile your blade. A lot to like. Now, what's the steel on this? This is that 8CR13 MOV steel. Sorry, I was a little off on that. I got a new camera that I, you can focus in on it. So there you can see what the tank stamp, the stamp is. This is analogous to the OS8 Japanese steel. From all indications, it's going to be a high quality steel. No, I haven't used it hard yet. Uh, I will as time goes on. There's only so many cutting tasks that I can do day to day. So uh, I'll report as the years go on, months and years, and tell you how it is. Then you see China stamped on the other side. Who cares if it's made in China? Like I've always said, quality control is, is the paramount thing for blades. It really does not matter where a blade is made. It just matters uh, what kind of quality control the company exercises over its manufacturers. And obviously, both from the bird line and this spider coat tenacious, Spyderco knows how to do that. They just get it done. Outstanding job, Spyderco. So good blade steel, great blade shape. And check this out. You can actually see this, the full flat grinding. You can see it on how this blade area tapers down. That's a good indication of exactly how that full flat grinding is. This is the full blade width here. And you can see it tapers as it goes towards the edge. And it's full flat ground. So there's no hollow portions in the blade. Very nice. Love it. Nice sweep on the blade, so it's not a straight blade, so it'll lend itself both to EDC tasks and also some piercing cuts if we need to, maybe in a defensive roll. How does this thing deploy? Oh, man, it deploys fast, and it rides on phosphor bronze bushings. Now, some of my uh, commenters said, hey, what's phosphor bronze? And I know some of you guys are new tonight, so let's just mention what that is. What that means is that inside the pivot, there are some phosphor bronze bushings that have very low friction qualities. And so I, I'm not going to take the knife to show you, but they're on each left and right hand sides of the blade. And what that does is it minimizes friction for a deployment. So the Tenacious just pops out of the blade very nicely balanced for deployment. I love it. 
also locks up very solidly. Solidly. Let me say that word right. Also, like I've mentioned in my other videos, there's no reason in the world a knife should not lock up tight, even if even at this price point. The birds get it. The spider coats get it. I have critiqued or criticized some other blades for not getting it, and deservedly so. But this tenacious oh, just locks up so nice. No plate either way, up, down, side to side. Very impressed. <clears throat> nice deployment hole, so that's easy to access. I know some folks don't like the spider coat design. I don't mind it at all. How's that thickness of the blade? Perfect. It's not overly thick, not too thin. Good tip strength. Again, for defensive purposes, you could put it to use. The blade is three and three eighths long, so medium sized blade, not too long, not too short. Again, great size for EDC. Let's talk about that jimping. And yes, again, Spider Code gets it right. Let's focus in tightly on that. That jimping is very sharp, cut just perfectly. That's the way to jimp a blade. Everybody pay attention. That's making nice. It's very purposeful. Nice thumb ramp. So if you do a thrust cut, your th thumb's going to run right into that ramp and it's going to have great traction. Also, this being a liner lock, which by the way, it's a relatively thick liner lock, they did an outstanding job of jimping the liner as well. So in the choil area, actually behind the choil area, I have traction both on the thumb ramp ramp rump that's good both on the thumb ramp and also the liner so great traction on the handle the handle itself is made of skeletonized stainless steel and again applause big applause for spider co that skeletonizes their handles they almost on every design will skeletonize their handle can you see it drilled out there and that minimizes a lot of weight so great job spider co uh, and on top of those skeletonized liners, we have very nicely checkered G10. Not as as, aggress as aggressive as I would like to see. I would like to see that G10 very aggressive, kind of like the Sig Tac Pterodactyl, but not too bad. And honestly, if it gets too aggressive, there's going to be people that will complain about it. They'll say, hey, man, that rips my, my hands up. So they kind of have to strike a medium balance here, and I think they did a good job of it. This is a pillar-constructed knife. In other words, it's open for mud, blood, guts, whatever you got going on. It'll flow right through. I, that's my preferred design. It's lighter weight. It's very strong, and it's easy to maintain. We, again, have the torque screws that put the handle together, so we can take that handle apart if we need to. And that brings us to that pocket clip. I would like to see the pocket clip blackened. It is a kind of a bright stainless steel pocket clip. Let me give this angle here. And it has that nice Spider Co. logo on it. Great job on that. Um, but I'm always preferring the bead blasted or preferably blackened clip. But for the price point this knife comes in at, it's amazing. And especially since Spider Co. allows you to reposition the pocket clip to any of the corners you so desire. With the handle pre-drilled and you'll screw right into the stainless steel liners. Very nice job. Um, they did about as good as they could mounting that pocket clip as low as possible on the handle. You know I critique it or criticize it often. I would like to see that pocket clip sog style so it buries deep in the pocket. But having a lanyard hole here, which by the way is adequately large for any type of lanyard you might have, they do a good job. And you can see that that pocket clip straddles that lanyard hole. Not too bad. Notice when I take the pocket clip on the Spyderco, you don't hear any twangy sounds like you did with the Blade Tech. That's because it's strong and it's tempered stainless steel. No problems there. It's going to last a long time. Man, there's a lot to like about this knife, especially at the price point. You're really crazy if you don't add this. In fact, I'm going to add this to my best EDC and folding tactical um, playlist because it just offers so much knife. It's a fast deploying knife, has a beautifully shaped blade with nice sweep, outstanding jimping on the thumb ramp, adequately large thumb hole, Nice G10, not FRM, but this is G10 handles. Really nice job for that price point. Just a beautiful knife. It's an enjoyable knife. And if you guys, I know some of you guys are tight on money and you want to add a tactical folder to your collection or an EDC folder, depending on what your needs are, this is definitely worthy of your consideration. This is a Spider Co. Tenacious. It is a high value, high quality knife. And that's a review by Nut and Fancy. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. A lot more coming when I get time. Peace.